Oh, all right. Welcome back to module six, walking your clients through each step of the transaction. Now, I know that this class is not geared towards helping buyers. It's geared towards helping first time home buyers. Um, they are a very special breed of, of buyers. And a lot of times they require a lot of babysitting and handholding, and that's fine. But remember that the process that you and I take for granted and have done literally hundreds of times in our careers is a process that they may not understand. So you are going to have to go through the process with them and you need to do it in small bite-sized chunks. So I'm about to give you the eight step plan on how to walk through a closing. Now, it's going to be very basic, it's going to be very broad, but it's going to give you a way to communicate to them, at least in the initial meeting, the process and how it goes. All right. Now, before you do that, you might want to sit down with them and understand a little more about them and a little more about where they're coming from because you are getting the opportunity to help people buy their first home. And I know that we have talked about this kind of tongue in cheek and I've been accused of being a mean guy, but the reality is you are getting to participate in the glory of someone else's realization of probably one of their major lifetime goals and accomplishments. And for that, you should be happy and you should understand that this is their time to shine and you're kind of there to be the project manager. So some things you should remember with first time home buyers is be a good listener. All right. Listen to what they're telling you. Don't hear what they said. Listen, there's a big difference between the two, at least according to my wife. My wife always tells me, I know you hear me, but are you listening? And I, uh, I told her, I said, honey, I think that's a very weird way to start a conversation. <laughs> Don't judge them. If they've got bad credit and collections and don't make a lot of money, that's exactly what you signed up for. That's the client you're looking for. I meant you're wanting first time home buyers. You're not going to have very seldom. Let me back up. Very seldom are you going to have a 750 credit score person with thirty forty thousand dollars in the bank as a first-time home buyer you might but i probably wouldn't count on that so understand where they're coming from and be sympathetic don't judge them the other thing is don't think they're stupid they're not stupid they're ignorant and there's a difference in that at least according to my grandma ignorant is an unlearned or an uneducated person Stupid is somebody that does not have the ability to learn. Now, could they be stupid? Oh, that's a whole separate conversation. But literally, treat them like they're ignorant. You're going to be the educator in this, all right? You want to become the trusted educator, the trusted informational provider. You're going to be the leader, uh, the project manager, however you want to look at it you are going to take these fledgling uh, buyers and walk them through the process. So what I've done is I've created eight steps. These eight steps are broad categories. They are pretty much cover what I would consider the eight highlighted points. Now it's entirely possible that you don't like these eight steps. Hey, find your own eight steps. You know, you might love these eight steps. You can have them, I don't care. That's what I'm here for is to educate you. You may also find that as each step occurs, you might want to revisit it a little more in depth. This is a broad category so that you can talk to the home buyer on your first or second meeting and explain like, look, here's eight points that we're gonna have to go through. Here's what's going to happen, yada, yada, yada. And then as we get to each point, we will probably have a further in-depth conversation about actually what's going on at this current moment, all right? 
so step one is you, the agent. The first step is essential in articulating your value. There we are again, talking about providing value. You have got to explain to them how that buying a home is very stressful and they can't just pick it out of the internet and why do I need an agent? I can do all the research. No, it's a very stressful process that you have been through and you are going to be the quarterback. All right. Uh, I've used a couple analogies. Let me use another one. If there's two minutes to go in the football game, what quarterback do you want leading your team? Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. You certainly don't want the freshman, uh, the rookie that has never been in this place. So you have to explain why they need you, the top realtor in the area, to help them. That's step one. Step two of this process is explaining to them setting their priorities. They need to make some big decisions about where they want, what they want, how much they want, what location, what size, what price range. All of these things are going to be decided and I go back to previous section. You may have a checklist for them. You may have a worksheet for them. You may have all kinds of things that you can give them to help them establish their priorities. One is that helps you when you go searching your MLS. Two, that also helps you so that if they come out of the left field and go, dude, we saw this house and you go, uh, that doesn't fit what you told me your priorities were. Are we sure we're going to spend the time and get distracted because you can't afford that? It's 17 bedrooms. It's a five car garage. I understand it looks great. And everybody wants to go into a 13,000 square foot, $5 million home, but it really is not on your list. So it does help you help them with the priorities. Step number three is the lender, making sure that they are prepared and pre-approved, but you also want to talk about that process with them. Most people just think, hey, some dude called me. I gave him some information. He called me three days later and told me what I could afford. That's what I know. Now, you may want to go through that individually and talk about, well, you know, you're going to have a deal with your credit score. Do you know what your credit score is? Do you have cash? Uh, how much have you got in your bank? Has it been there a while? Can you get a gift from a family member? Those are legal. So all of these things are going to be in step number three, and that's going to help you. Step four is the fun step. And that's used to be how I pitch it. Step four is the step that we're going to have fun. Now we're going to go look for the home. We're going to use your priorities list. We're going to then search out some of these homes and we're going to go look for them. Now, here's a case of where I would used to tell people, hey, you may not want to use third party apps. You want to go through my website, search my MLS. That way I can kind of see what's going on. I will say that's going to be a hard pitch today with Zillow and iBuyers and Realtor.com and all of those kind of places. But you definitely do have to communicate to them how Zillow works, how Realtor.com works. So that if they're sitting at home at midnight in their underwear, scaring the web page, and they see a house that they love, that fits all of their priorities, and up in the corner, they see an agent and they go, oh, I should call, click that agent, send him an email. You need to explain to them, hey, I'm your agent. Don't contact that guy, contact me. I'll find that property and then we will go look at it. So I know a lot of you guys don't like these third party app people, specifically the capital Z, but you better explain how it works because I guarantee most first time home buyers in that Gen X, Gen Y are going to be looking at it. So you might as well head it off at the pass. Step five is the offer process. Hey, we'll, we'll make an offer. And that can be a tremendous procedure in itself. How much do we offer? How much do we not offer? Do we ask for closing costs? You know, what's the property's value? Did the agent do a CMA? Are you letting them put a good offer in or are you letting them put a bad offer in? 
I mean, are they overpaying for the house? <laughs> um, this is when you're going to explain contingencies. Yes, we're going to put a financing contingency in. Therefore, if you don't get a loan or don't get approved, we'll get our earnest money back. That might be something else you have to talk about. How much earnest money are you going to be able to put down? 500, 1,000, 1 percent? Things of that nature is part of this little step five bucket that you want to talk about. Step six up there on the screen is the, the pre-closing and the closing. This is the point where you're going to talk about after the offer is accepted, obviously. Now is when the urgency comes in because they're going to have to order the appraisal through their lender. They're going to have to order home inspections, which may lead to other inspections, depending on what that home inspection finds. You better explain the home inspection process. You better talk about all of the things on the report. You know, what's going to come back. You need to also explain what I call the new car syndrome. Hey dude, I understand this house is in your price range, but it's 21 years old. You're not buying a new car. That item on the inspection process is probably not one that we're going to argue. You know, we're not going to have them repaint the room or fix a cracked light plate. You're buying a 21 year old home. You want to buy a brand new home? We can do that as well. Builders work with first time home buyers, but don't expect to try and buy a brand new home for a used car price. And what I mean by that is the difference between that home at 190 in the market and brand new built by your local builder at 300. That's the new car price. You're buying the used car price. Now, I'm not saying that you're not going to run into problems and that you should negotiate strong to get your client the best deal. But understand, there are going to be things that you will go, uh, we're not going to really expect them to fix that. Step seven is the walkthrough. This is the final step of the inspection process to make sure they got fixed, what they were supposed to fix, all of these things. And you're going to talk to them and explain that you are there to help ensure the repairs got done, what would happen if they don't get done. And then last step that people leave out all of the time is step eight, post-closing. There's an old saying in the sales world that says, keeping a client is cheaper than getting a new one. And what they mean by that is the cost of marketing, the cost of acquisition of that lead, the time spent in cultivating that lead. It is easier and cheaper, cheaper to keep a current client than to get a new one. So when, when they close, why do most agents just see ya? and forget about them. You need to keep them close to you so that A, they can give referrals, or B, if they want to move in a couple years that you want to still be on their top of the mind, you do not want to cut ties with your client and go, I'm out later, all right? You might explain to them, hey, as a post-closing uh, gift, we're going to give you a housewarming party. Uh, we're going to help you move. We've got a moving truck. We've got all of these services once again to help keep you on top of their mind for their referrals and for their later business. You might also want to tell them, hey, I'm going to reach out to you in three or four months to make sure you filed your homeowner's exemption and your mortgage exemption and all of these. And as a good agent, what you should do is you got this cool little thing right here. And for those of you at home, I'm holding up my iPhone that actually uh, does things like keeps dates. All right. And typically what I would do is at the closing table, literally say three months from today, put a reminder in, call Barb Jones about home inspection. I mean, sorry, <laughs> about home exemptions, inspections, exemptions, whatever, close enough. Call Barb Jones about home exemptions. Now in three months, you get to follow up. Hey, Barb, how'd that house go? How you loving it? Good job. Hey, I just wanted to call and remind you, now you can go down and to your county and file the home exemption so that your taxes get to come off. 
Oh, and by the way, I got a couple slots open for new clientele. If you've got a friend that's a first time home buyer that's looking, remember, I really love dealing with those kind of people. Feel free to give them my name. All of that just came off the top of my head because I've done it so many times. You guys need to think about and keep in mind post-closing is actually step number eight. So what you've got are these eight things that you're going to want to go through with your client prior to actually doing the steps. All right. You want to give them a crystal clear outlook on what's going on. Oh, one other thing you can do in step eight, just don't on me. You could also talk about, hey, reach out to me. I've got a network of handyman and plumbers and electricians. Should something come up, I understand you're brand new. You may not have those kind of people. I do. Feel free to reach out to me for those help as well. Once again, that is another tick or check mark that's going to A, give customer service, but B, now, hey, we need to call our agent and get some help so that they can refer you on. All right. Um, any questions, feel free to email me at Raymond at realuniversity.com. Uh, we've got just uh, one or two more modules here and then we'll be done with this course. Hang around. We'll be right back.